Hey, everybody, this is Daniel and Clint, Locked On Bulldogs. We talk maybe how the opponents for Florida's for Florida and Oregon next year that Georgia plays might be real similar to each other, Daniel. Ooh. We're going to tell you why and then list out our opponents for next year and how they rank according to strength next on Locked On Bulldogs. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. He is Clint. We are the Lockdown Bulldogs, part of Lockdown Podcast Network, Locked On Atlanta Sports. Mm -hmm. Uh, Happy to be with you on this Friday. Thanks for tuning in, uh, being a part of the show. Uh, If you haven't noticed, we're doing we're trying to do three days a week here for these couple of months. When the season, when we get back into fall camp, we'll ramp back up to five days a week, get ready for the season. And so just know that that's kind of our tentative recording schedule. If you look for us and we're not there on a day, that's what we're trying to do is three days a week. So hopefully you have enjoyed this week's worth of episodes. We'll have more stuff for you next week. But today, Clint, a little bit of a, a Spider-Man meme. You know the Spider-Man meme. It's a, it's a little bit of a... I know the Spider-Man meme. It's a little bit of a looking in the mirror situation. So... Um, for those of you that do not know, and there's maybe many of you, whether you're listening on audio, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you're at, or whether you're watching on YouTube, um, if you're on YouTube, you probably know if you've ever clicked in the comments, which sometimes yeah. I do not recommend because no. you go down there in that comments, no. it is, it's a, it's a, it's a choice you're making. Do you know? Do you know you're supposed to like clean out the elbow of sink plumbing every so often, Daniel? But nobody knows yeah. why. Oh, because it's not great. You- you it's don't great. want to open that up. It's gross. Yeah. That's what the it's comments nice. section of YouTube is. That's sometimes. what the comments on YouTube. If you've never been down there in the comments, then let me explain to you what happens down there. There is a bot that <laughs> has been created by Georgia fans. Okay. It's a it's a it's a, a phishing with a with a ph. It's a, a spam bot yes. created by Georgia fans as a joke. To accentuate all of the dumbest parts of a Florida fan, it's all a of the dumbest takes. Yeah. It is a, it's a caricature, and if I may, Please. it's, it's kind of even an extreme one. You see those people down by the pier, yeah. and they're doing the caricatures, you know, and the and the guy's nose oh. and his ears wow. are just sticking wet, you know, like sticking way yes. out. They're drawing the people. Um, <laughs> Sometimes you're like, you could have been a little bit more realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't have to be so extreme. But this bot is very extreme. And the bot's name is Scully Ready. I'm not sure why they chose that name. But the creators, the computer scientists that made it, that's what they have called it. And so it's down there posing as a Florida fan, just spouting off the absolute biggest nonsense that we've ever heard. One of our favorite listeners to the show, if we could be honest. For a second. And one of Scully Reddy's most recent takes is that Florida is, yep. quote unquote, miles ahead yep. of Oregon in terms oh, of their talent 100%. on the field. Now, <clears throat> so many thoughts emerge. Number one, that's a weird flex. Okay. You understand Pretty what good. a weird flex is? Like, that's a, that's like, me going up to my three-year-old and saying, yeah. I'm much stronger than you. <laughs> like, okay. Like, is it, you're sure. better than Oregon? That's what you're going with? A I'm team be- that has never won a in the in, in, in the time that I've been alive. We are better that's, than them. Okay, are you better than SMU? I, I don't know. <laughs> that's like... And, and then two... Are they though? Are is they Florida though? better than Oregon, Clint? That's what we should. Make Some talk. people are asking, and that's what we do want to talk about, right? First out of the bat, let's talk about what has been touted as the great savior. Florida is coming back to dominance because of Billy Napier, the Sun Belt King himself. Which, by the way, I Billy really the Kid on making a uh, WWF type 
Tyrant Sun on it at some point and and posing it in the background. It's the Sun Belt. The Sun Belt King himself, That's... Billy Napier. The That's one right. who recruits at a pace that is relentless, mm-hmm. that is going to draw Nick these Saban people esque. in. He Nick learned Saban from the best. He's from the he city of Alabama. Mm. Oh, but this just in, you got skull dragged by King Kirby, who took a five star. I think it's pronounced Scully dragged. Scully Sc- dragged. Scully. Yeah. You got okay. Scully dragged by a one time commit, a one time guy that said, no, I'm, I'm for it all the way. And Kirby and company just came right out of Billy Napier's hand. He now talking about three stars that he's getting because he don't want to talk about a five star cornerback that. Mr. Horn of the NFL said, this kid is different. This kid in seventh grade looks like a first rounder. Uh, they're not ready for that conversation. And the comparison is Oregon also has a first year head coach, but ours is better. Lanning, who won a national championship, who was in big boy football in the SEC for years, right. not in the – For years and years, Sun like his Delta. entire career, like, as in. There, there it is. Like he, he learned football only being the best – conference in all of America. Whoa, 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 whoa. Clint, you can't hire a coach that's never been a head coach before. Do you understand how big of an idiot you'd have to be to hire a coach that's never been a head coach? You'll never win a national chip. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. 2008 um, called, and it was a long, long time ago. And long, it's getting longer every long year. Time. And Billy Napier ain't bringing it back. So no, no, there. we'll be here. Uh, but any again, other similarities? Any other similarities between Ro- Florida and Oregon? Rosters, rosters, Daniel. Let's go okay. down the rosters. Okay. We have a comparison. I've been told last year, according to many lists and watch lists and Heisman and maybe All American, that one Auburn quarterback was going to just secure that bag, secure that Bro. bag of Heisman, blow everybody out of mm-hmm. the water. Bo Nix was going to be the next great hope and take Al- uh, take Auburn to beat Alabama, to run the state, to drag their opponents like Georgia, and then that didn't happen. Let me let me explain Bo Nix to you in five seconds if you have the time. <laughs> um, Kirby calls Bo Nix maybe the best athlete at quarterback that he's ever coached against. And he said it the number of times now that you start – it starts to sound weird, you know, like he's very weird. Like Kirby, you've already used that line. Like you know that, like, and he keeps using it. Do that, you know why he keeps using that same line? Please, Be- please tell me. Because Bo Nix is an athlete, not a quarterback, and that's the only thing Bo Nix can do. Mary, he's not a quarterback. Mary Beth was at home and heard Kirby disparaging Bo Nix, and she says, "If you got nothing nice to say." Don't say anything at all. And so Kirby said. Kirby found the one thing he could do well, which is run around like a crazy person and be an athlete. Bo Nix, no argument from us, is an athlete. Not very good at playing quarterback. Clint, does that remind you of anyone else? Hold on. Hold on. Let me channel my inner thought. Oh, that's AR-15 from Florida. The guy runs around like there's nobody's business. Well, last year where he couldn't run – any amount because he did he not do sacked. that he didn't do no. that but he was also throwing incompletions off time and interceptions because he can't throw the ball well and i'm hearing florida fan tell me how excited look you're not better than oregon if anything you are oregon which isn't a comp by the way that's it that's oregon is is in the pac-12 and not the best football team in their own conference usc has taken that and usc is bad we're going to rank the uh, 12 opponents on Georgia's regular season schedule coming up. And spoiler alert, Oregon and Florida are not going to be in the top few. You understand what we're saying here? So um, uh, let's jump into that um, uh, right after this. First, we want to let you know about one of our sponsors. One of our favorites is Bet Online. Bet Online is your sports book experts. They have everything you need right now. To do all your – my trust and love, it is not Sal down at the corner over at Denny's no. or wherever you do. We don't play that game. What we do is we play safe, reliable. Um, we put, we do payouts that are quick. We do all the sports betting parlays over under season win totals, game lines, in action play, hello, 
Hello in mm -hmm. action play, which oh. is a nice little yes. spicy take. You all need to be part of that. That's Bet Online, the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs and Locked On Podcasts. It's the official one. It's the one Daniel and I go to. Head over there right now. Sports betting at your fingertips. That's Bet Online, your sports book experts. <clears throat> all right, Clint. So um, uh, we ranked the coaches in the SEC. We did. Nobody seemed to have a problem with our rankings there. No. And so we will just jump straight in to opponents on Georgia's schedule. Now, I want to start right at the top. Okay. Okay. We're going to marry one. the lead at it. all. We're going one to twelve. Okay? okay. So we will get to the 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 Kent States of the world uh, later. Sanford. Who are you taking as the number one? most difficult opponent on Georgia's schedule because – and now, I want to clarify this. We're talking about the best teams not factoring in home or away. So we're not talking about yes. the games Georgia might lose. Yes. Most likely to lose. We're talking about the best teams on Georgia's schedule independently of their ability – of of the game they play against Georgia. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You have two options with this, Daniel. In my assertion, there is not – it is not Florida, spoiler alert. It is not Oregon, spoiler alert. Uh, it's two of them. And it's, it's Tennessee and it's Kentucky. Sure as heck ain't Auburn. Yeah. It's not Auburn. Don't know who's playing quarterback yet. Don't know who's playing running back because those two positions left his program. Um, yeah. Don't know who coaching defense. I still don't know about that one. That, no, that what, what is happening at Auburn? What is okay, all right. it's, it's, stop. Stop. We can't <laughs> – we can't get that. Zach, we're sorry. We're sorry, buddy. It's Tennessee and it's um, Kentucky. Okay. A lot of now, people a lot of people think it's Kentucky club. And look, I might fall into that category because I think Stoops is a great coach. I think I could think of but if you're asking me most talented, the team that's going to get a lot of the the team that's going to be top I'll, I'll go out. They'll be top fifteen when we Okay. I think I think by that, November the fifth. Yeah, I think by that late in the season they'll be top fifteen. I still think that Tennessee, Tennessee, the Tennessee, Tennessee Volunteers. It's the Tennessee Volunteers are the best team on our schedule, Daniel. It's because their offense. I, I think I agree, but I'm going to put those two schools neck and neck. I think yes. When if the offense at Kentucky can get going, if the quarterback can Ooh. continue to take steps forward, you, you know, they like their offensive coordinator. They like their offensive system. Stoops finally has somebody there that they feel like they can move the ball through the air. You know, the quarterback was absolutely abysmal. Will Levis last year was absolutely abysmal in terms of turning the ball over. It seemed like every time he dropped back and slung it down the field, it was going to be a touchdown, but you didn't know which team was going to score that touchdown. That's not great for a quarterback. No. No. Georgia fans would love it because they hate efficiency, as we said on Monday's show. They <laughs> hate efficiency. They That's hate right. winning. They want Will That's Levis, right. a quarterback. If Will Levis continues to take step, steps forward and the Kentucky offense comes along behind him, I think Kentucky's got a real shot because I think they will have a better defense than Tennessee. But at this point, I think you give it a slight edge to Tennessee. But Tennessee and Kentucky are right there, one and two. So now, Clint, three and four. Ooh. Where are we going here? Let me just regale you with – Please. People think Georgia's going to go 10 and two in the regular season. Now, now by people, we mean Brandon Walker of Barstool Sports <laughs> specifically. Thank you. Yes, and he wants you to remember that in March of 2009, he predicted Georgia was going to win the 2021 National Championship, and that's why you should listen to the nonsense he's spewing out right now because he said one true thing earlier. That means that all of the crap he's saying now should be taken as the gospel. Interesting. Huh. Okay, Oregon, Samford, South Carolina, Kent State, Missouri, Auburn, Vanderbilt, Florida, Mississippi State, and Georgia Tech, Clint. I need the next two in the right. list, and, and then I'll, I'll help you sort them out. This is – I'll give you the next two. 
because you're not going to look positions, and I don't think they're particularly great positions. I just think compared to the rest of the teams, again, it's compared with a, a, a closed pool. We're not saying nationally. We're not even saying okay. you know potential. But y'all, the Gamecocks are in the discussion for the third best team that we are playing, which that shows you how ludicrous it is. People two. think we're going to go ten and two, and it's because of the new quarterback. And again, Be- Beamer, I got all, I got respect, mad respect for Coach Beamer, and I continue, I will keep on saying that until I'm blue in the face. I got mad respect. I don't know how much longer he's going to last at USC, but who knows? Um, it's it's ball point oh whatever two point oh over there. And it's probably Oregon and Mississippi State are, are yeah. the next tier, Daniel. I like it. I was going to go Oregon, South Carolina. And so we're yeah. right. We're tracking on the same page. I would give Oregon the nod at three. And then I would go mm-hmm. South Carolina at four. And then when I think we talk about yeah. five and six, when we talk about five and six in the next segment, we will get into, yeah, probably Mississippi State and somebody else. But I agree with your points about South Carolina. Now, you know, that there's a reason that that quarterback is playing at South Carolina. They, they have some weapons. He got, he, got, he got benched and he got run out of town. That is also true. <laughs> he, threw he, the ball, he threw the ball to the other team all the time is what he did, Clint. He threw the ball to the wrong team all that time. You remember what we were saying on Monday about preseason All-America list? How many preseason All America lists this homeboy been on? This- uh, by the way, really quick, Daniel and I have a bet every single year that him and I do for for cash money. It's a it's a mm-hmm. comprehensive list. We talk about the time. Uh, who had who had who had him uh, as a Heisman finalist on that, that bet? Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> you hate to see it. Okay. So we got South Carolina coming in at four. We got Oregon at three. We're coming back in the next segment, round out the list, figure out who the five through 12 most difficult schools, most uh, talented schools Georgia will play next season. First, I want to let you know about Rock Auto, Clint. Rock yes, Auto, the full mustache of auto parts retailers. Uh, Rock Auto has every part that your car will ever need, whether you're car is uh, uh, foreign or domestic, whether it is an older model or it's brand new, whether you need a cosmetic part or you need a mechanical part, rockauto.com is the place to go. From floor mats to mufflers, they have it all and they have it for your exact make and model, the exact right part that your car needs, every part that your car will ever need. Don't go to an auto parts store where they have a handful of parts that they're going to try to fit a square peg into a round hole in your car and it's not going to work go to rockauto.com get the exact right part that you need get it at a guaranteed reliably low price get it shipped Mm. straight to Mm. your door you don't have to spend gas money clint driving to the auto parts store that'll save you 196 dollars that's just going to the corner and back. Just go into the corner and back. RockAuto.com, the exact right part, every part that your car will ever need at RockAuto.com. Put in locked on and how did you hear about a section at RockAuto.com. We got the rest of the list to get to, Daniel, of opponents for Georgia this coming year. Uh, we're the five and six, and I presented to you Mississippi State being in close next tier mm-hmm. to that. And that has nothing, again, it's a closed loop. This is only the teams that we have. We have Vanderbilt. We have Samford, Daniel, for the love. We have Kent State. These are the teams that we're going to get. You're going from worst to best in that list. Missouri, Sanford, Florida, Kent State. And Georgia Tech. <laughs> this is what we got. My Gosh, bottom rung out. We got Sanford and Kent State at the bottom. Those are those are the worst teams on the schedule. There's three, I have four. No interest in ranking them. They're I don't not, care. They don't care. Eleven and twelve. You sort it out. <laughs> I have a good buddy that went to Sanford, so I'm going to make them eleven, and I'm going to put Kent State twelve. Okay. Don't care. The Eagles. So yeah, keep them keep them <laughs> at twelve. This is what this is the level we're at. We have Mizzou, Florida, Georgia Tech. Um, and Mississippi State. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go Mississippi State five, and I'm going to go Florida six. I think this is the uh, – I think you could talk me into flipping those. I think you think Mississippi sure. State is ahead of Florida. I think you could talk me into because of the dynamic of Anthony Richardson, will he progress as sure. a quarterback, that has the potential to elevate Florida above Mississippi State. We know – look, we know Florida is going to be more talented than Mississippi State. Even with Dan Mullins recruiting, Florida is going to be more talented than Mississippi State. But we also know that Mississippi State is going to run a system that's going to utilize their limited talent yep. in an effective way. Yes. And so I think you have to look at them as a potential threat. But I do think you put Florida in there next. And then now, now you're in a kind of a weird spot. Because you got Auburn, Missouri, Vanderbilt, and Georgia Tech. And if you don't say Auburn next, you're really making a statement about Auburn. Like, you understand? I, I, like, you're digging in about how bad Auburn is. You are saying Brian Harson is the first head football coach fired this year. Maybe after, like, week two. I was just going to say – it's not even the leash is, leash is so rank them next that yes before it gets to light jacket weather he's gone Daniel yes he's still in a full sweat on the sideline <laughs> and he gets a can yeah. that that polo is just seeping down halftime <laughs> it has to be Auburn they still have guys on the roster that are four stars five stars still going to go to the NFL it has to be Auburn after that point yeah has to be. Um, has to be and then you do i i think you then uh go um georgia tech daniel i i, I mean head of missouri look i think wow eli Drinkovitz, the cpa of g off is not better i i understand i, I was really just about do. to say i give me eli Drinkovitz 10 times out of 10 over jeff collins i i think let me ask you this when eli Drinkovitz came on the scene he did some notable things Things year one, Daniel. He did, he did some no. Has Geoff done he... any notable things ever? Yes, he has implemented a bicep curl on the sideline regimen that has totally taken college football by storm. If you don't see that, I can't help you anymore. <laughs> by the way, it's just really my looks at the whole landscape of the of college football, which is all the premier programs who are winning championships not a single one of them is doing it and he goes i cannot thank these guys this is what we're doing <laughs> this is what we this is what's going to get us a, a conference title this is what we're doing um follow-up question to that yes do you think eli drinkovitz has ever done a bicep curl in his entire life <laughs> let me tell you this right now okay i'm not this next statement is not disparaging a coach who hasn't played football i'm not saying that okay you can no. coach and do yeah. well well but i'm also here to tell you that eric spolstra in the nba great example of that great great example 100 yeah. percent. but i am here to tell you that um if i was if i was in a, a cd bar um, and Eli Drinkovitz and I are the only ones who are taking on people. Um, I'm throwing him at the feet as cannon fodder, knowing that he is useless in every other facet of that. that. I can't help but notice a lot of your illustrations take place at a bar and involve a fight. Is that, is that fair to say? Is that, is that an accurate summation? <laughs> Look. Look, guys, I'm not telling you that I'm We not are who we are. At some point, we just – look, there there are not – there are not many people – there are not many people still tuned in to this show. No. But let me just say, no. if it weren't for sponsors and a desire to actually be successful, this is all the show would be. <laughs> Go back and listen to the very this early episodes. This is the show.
Like this is how so, you like cut our teeth podcasting, and all of you morons that are still listening to this were there at the out. beginning with us. Shout out to all. That's what I was just about to say. Shout out to all the OGs that are still listening. Uh, um, all right. I'm gonna put Missouri ahead of Georgia Tech, but obviously I got Georgia Tech ahead of Vanderbilt. I'm, I'm I got fine. I probably I'm if I'm being honest, I probably got Kent State ahead of Vanderbilt as well. Like I'm not that I don't I do not think it's ridiculous to say that Kent State could be a better football team than Vanderbilt this year. Uh so don't sleep on that. Vanderbilt will go winless again in the SEC. And 100%. And, they, and they play Missouri. So that's saying something. We are the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. We will be back next week to talk lots more about the university of georgia thanks for tuning in uh this week and we will see you guys later see you